the crook and the flail. The flail is the symbol on the right hand side. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to all of the enlightened souls out there. And I'd like to give a shout out to the Most High, naturally. I haven't done a video in a little while, you know, but there's a time and place for everything, right? Anyway, back to the crook and flail. These are very important symbols of rulership in ancient Egypt. And as such, it's important to know the origins of these symbols. Well, for me, I'm not going to go into breaking down the origins of the symbols because there's plenty of information available on the internet about these most powerful symbols. But I just wanted to point out something. This morning I was taking a walk. And when I was taking that walk, I came across this little thing right here. This little, uh, this little, I guess you would call it, uh, wheat? I don't know. It's, I just noticed something about it is that it is good for correction. Like when, you know, when you was little and you used to act up, your mama would go get a, um, little piece of stick, a twig. And whoop your butt with it. Well, this thing can be used to feed people. And it can be used to punish people. So as such, I said, wow, this looks a lot like the flail of ancient Egypt. I remember one time I posted a uh, picture on Facebook. Matter of fact, let me, let me, let me play some music in the background. Y'all know how I do. I always like to play music on my videos. The name of this song right here is Agnes Day, or however you pronounce it in Latin. It's the Lamb of God. Very inspiring music. I guess it's Gregorian music. But anyway, back to the subject. So I noticed this little symbol here, this little piece of wheat, whatever you call it, it can inflict pain. But it can also be used to feed people. So when I posted this picture on Facebook, Taki Grant commented on the picture. He said, yo, man, that those symbols right there, you can't just be using them and stuff like that because they're very important symbols. And it represents the aspect of being able to guide and feed your people. I'm just showing you this video because it represents duality. You can use something to feed people, and you can use that same instrument to punish people. And that's what the kings of Egypt used to do. They were responsible for healing their people, making sure their people were well fed, and if necessary, for punishing their people. So I just wanted to share with you that the next time you pick up a little leaf on the ground, realize that it's more significant than just being a leaf. Which is why in the Hare Krishna movement, they always say, anything that you offer Krishna in a spirit of devotion, he will accept it. Whether it's a leaf, water, a flower, a fruit, anything basically vegetarian. And that's another interesting thing about the whole Hare Krishna movement. They don't believe in killing. They don't believe in taking life. So therefore, they don't eat animals. It's interesting because the Christian God or the God of the Bible always demands a blood sacrifice. I'm not going to judge the God of the Bible, but the proof is in the pudding. If you want to worship a God who deals in blood, then you will be required to shed blood. Peace and blessings to all my people. Hari Bol. And remember, chant the Hari Krishna mantra. No matter what faith you are, it will strengthen your faith, it will raise your kundalini, and it will reignite your dormant love of God. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Peace and blessings.